Hello and what is going on? I'm L Director. This is L Director Vision, and you are watching Indie Rebel Hollywood Effects without the Hollywood budget. Today we are going to be recreating a classic Andrew Kramer video copilot.net tutorial, and that is the one of like the burned up face and stuff that's glowing, um, inspired by Iron Man 3. This tutorial came out, I think over 10 years ago, so it's pretty old, but the effect still looks really cool, and I took one look at that and I said, I want to try to recreate that inside of Fusion using this free tool that we all have available to us now. So if that sounds interesting to you, head over to the link in the description below. You can download the, the footage to play along with me, and I'm going to show you how to recreate this thing, not in After Effects, but in Black Magic Fusion. Stick around, let's have some fun. Alright, so here we are at my editing machine, my machine of glory, and let's go ahead and fire up DaVinci Resolve. My computer is a little slow, a little dated. Um, it is an HP Z800, it's about 10 years old, but it does do the job and does the job just fine. Alright, we're going to go ahead and start a brand new project, just start this over from scratch. I'm going to go over to the edit page because I like working from there, and let's go ahead and import our footage. Okay, so I have this shot of Sam Loya doing a very cool turn, nice parallax on the shot and everything. It's a short shot, it's only about 60 frames long, and that's what we're going to be working on today. So, alright, so let's go ahead and jump over to the Fusion page, just by clicking the button down here at the bottom of the screen, and my Resolve is going to think for a minute, and yay, cool, here we are. Awesome. I'm going to go and delete the media out node. I don't want to work with that right now. It just gets in my way. And if I press 1 on the keyboard, we can see my shot. Now, I do have my Fusion set up to only display uh, one viewer at a time. I like working that way coming from Nuke. Uh, but do whatever you want to do. We can see we do have 60 frames in the shot. Let's play it. Make sure it all buffers up and is cached in here. There we go. That's looking fantastic. And what I want to do is I'm going to start on this last frame. We're going to do all of our work down here at the very, very end. And then we'll go through and do the motion tracking that we need to do, pin everything into place. Traditionally, you would go ahead and do your motion tracking first, but in this case, um, it doesn't matter. So we're just going to go and do it at the end. What I want to do is I'm going to add this glowing effect from inside of him. We're going to see all these veins, and it's as if we get this like translucent effect, and we can see through his skin to everything going on inside. And it's going to take place right about through here and kind of the side of his face. So let's create our actual texture that we're going to be working with. I'm going to hit shift space on the keyboard and I'm going to type in noise and I want to use this fast noise right here. And let's go ahead and just take a look at that real quick. All right, here we are. Jump over to the color settings and increase that alpha. We want to be working with just a black and white image. Flip back over to noise, crank up the detail. Let's go ahead and increase that contrast just a little bit as well. I might turn down the brightness and then I'm going to start screwing with the scale and this is going to help me size it down to where I want it to be. Maybe somewhere right around here will give me quite a nice look. What I can do now is let's go ahead and mask off the noise. I'm going to add a polygon okay, right off here to the side. I'm going to view my footage of Sam by pressing 1 on the keyboard select the polygon and now I can draw my shape looking at him even though it's going to go into the noise texture here in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and do these all as a nice curved spline and it comes up into here, down through here, down, down, up, 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 something like that. And you can rearrange these, reposition these, do whatever we need to do to kind of Get the angles looking right. Ooh, that's kind of cool coming up like that around there. Kind of like that. That looks very nice. Drag that into your fast noise. And we're going to merge the fast noise on top of the footage and go ahead and view it. Okay. And let's go ahead and blur that mask. Come up here and soften that edge just a little bit. Feathers that into the shot. And then we can come back and readjust this a little bit more. Click away. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now the other thing I might want to do is play with what's called the seethe. And this just kind of moves things around until we get kind of a, a good pattern that we like. Ooh, yeah, that can look really nice on the face when we're all done. We can change all this later. This is all completely procedural. Nothing is set in stone. Alright, so that takes care of step one. 
Now I'm going to disconnect this for now, okay? And we're just gonna go ahead and zoom out and we'll move it over here off to the side and we'll come back to that later, okay? We're not gonna worry about it at the moment. What I wanna do though is go ahead and bring in my veins. If I take a look at these, we can see we have these really cool like tree root vein type textures. They're all nice and faded out. And we're gonna use these to create the veins go across Sam's face. What I wanna do though, in order to make things easy, is I'm working in the 16 by nine comp here. I'm going to merge these on top of a solid white background. So I'm gonna click background, change my color over to solid white, just like that. And let's go ahead and just merge it on top. There we go, I'll view the background so that turns white so I know what that is. And then I view my merge and there it is sitting right there on top of it. Now I can throw this back on top of my original footage and if we change this to multiply, that gets rid of the white and now I can see what I'm doing. So I can add a transform node and I can begin to position these veins where I want them to be in the shot. So maybe something up here, turn that down just slightly, rotate it a bit and that looks good for there. So I'm gonna take a transform node. Now I'm going to add a, another transform node. I'm going to run that into the same effect. I'm gonna put this merged on top of the previous one. Okay, so I want my transform node stacked, and I got this merge node coming off to the side. With this one, I can go and move it down, and maybe we're gonna take a look down here. Something like that, that could be pretty cool. Got all these nice veins coming through the cheeks. And let's go ahead and do one more. Add another transform node, pipe my texture into it, merge it on top. So I got my background pipe coming in. These are being added in from the side. And we will just go and take this one straight across, maybe over to here. Maybe we scale it down a little bit. Let's see, there's my size. There we go, like that. And maybe we will rotate that so it fits in there well. And we go something about like that. Now, due to the nature of uh, multiplying all these images on top of each other and these being solid white, um, you do need to be careful of your edges blocking each other out. If we look in really close here, you can see it's just blocked out that other one that does exist. Now, if you don't want that, let's say you do want the overlap, one thing you can do, is select your merge and come on over here and change this to multiply as well, okay? And that will allow you to put them on top of each other, but we start getting all this black uh, masking and edges and stuff going on down here. So you really need to be careful with it. I'm not a huge fan of it. We'll just keep it at normal. It's gonna make everything work and, and look just fine, I think. So we do something like that. Hard part's always trying to decide where to stick your veins. I wonder if vampires have the same problem. All right, that looks pretty good. About like that, cool. All right, let's go and clean up our comp a little bit here. And I wanna bring in my next uh, piece of footage, my next uh, element or asset, and that's this white on black. And first thing we wanna do is flip it. Now, if you're working in Fusion standalone, uh, you'll need to use some channel booleans to flip this around. However, here inside of the Resolve version, we have an invert color, which works out quite nice. Let's go and take a look at it. Yep, that flips that around just fine. We're gonna go and throw that on top of this pre-existing merge down here. Let's go ahead and view it. And we're gonna set the blend mode over to multiply just like the others. Come back down here. And let's add a transform node as well. I like to keep things kind of cleaned up. But yeah, we can drop it down like that. And I'm just gonna kind of set this up where I want it here in the middle of this frame, middle of his cheek. And let's go ahead and blur that as well. We'll just blur it out just ever so slightly. Something about like that. Now we can go through and we can add as many of these veins and do whatever we want to the image. But for right now, I think that's gonna get us started and, and make this work out pretty good. Let's go ahead and remove all right, so we've got three different things here that we're working with. We have our veins. In fact, let's go ahead and just throw those into an underlay to keep track of things. Okay, I'm gonna select them. And since this will be used as a mask, I'm gonna make it green. I like using green to represent my mask because it makes me think of green screen and that kind of a thing, which is commonly used for making masks. Give ourselves a little extra room. All right, so now I can move all those together. Then we have our um, I guess glow, we'll call this the glow or illumination. Okay, give us our, again a little bit of room. All right, we got our illumination right here. 
What I want to do, let's go and move our footage out of the way. I'm first going to add in a uh, another background. I'm going to make it black. Okay, we can see it's a black background. I want to merge my illumination on top of it. And we can even throw this here into the same same deal maybe like this. But I'm going to mask it by uh, my output over here. Now, I don't have an alpha channel yet. Let's go and take a quick look. Uh, and I flipped my alpha. Yep, no alpha. Let's go ahead and quickly make one. I'm going to add a channel booleans node. Okay, let's, again, keeping things organized, move that over here. And I'm going to set my alpha to be my red foreground. And if I go ahead and uh, view this booleans and I flip it, we can see we actually have an alpha channel now we can work with, so that's pretty cool. And what that's done is it's now, you can see the veins here inside of the glow. If I take them off, okay, there's no veins. We throw it back on, not from there, from here. We can see those veins appear again. And then that will end up getting merged on top of the footage down here. So let's go ahead and merge that on top of our footage. Let's view that, okay. And make sure that this merge node down here is not set to multiply because that doesn't work for us anymore. We want to set it to color dodge and that starts to get us that effect we're looking for. Now if I go back into my noise texture, I can start to play with that seed that we were talking about and really get this look dialed in kind of where I'm wanting. Ooh, somewhere down there. That's got kind of a nice look to it. Play with the scale up and down, getting as much texture noise as we want. Make sure we're seeing all those fine little veins and that kind of a thing. And uh, yeah, I think that's gonna work out quite nice. Let's go ahead and add a color corrector now. And actually I'm going to use a curves effect. Okay, so we got color curves. We'll just throw this off to the side. Again, keep things lined up here. So I'm gonna stick this right there. This off to the side here. And then our merge node finally coming down like that. With the curve selected, I'm going to play with a couple different things. With the red, we're going to go ahead and increase that a little bit. You can see that's adding that reddish hue and glow to here. Now if I come in and I pull some blue out of the lows, that starts to get me into the orangey yellow realm. And I can come in here and play with the green a little bit too if I wanted to, to kind of yellow that out just a smidge more. That's actually looking pretty nice. Now we've got that, that glow coming from within the cheeks now. And uh, yeah, that's actually, that's actually looking really, really good. I'm gonna go ahead and move these down to here. Again, I like, I like keeping a clean node graph. I've worked in some comps that are just absolutely insane to try to keep track of at a later date. And this is a lot easier to do. We can see that we've done something with uh, the veins up here, right? If I go in close, I can see I've got the veins. They feed into the mask input down here on this fast noise. We color correct that. And then that gets finally merged in on top of the shot. So now that we've got our look dialed in, we know that this is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. What I need to do now is motion track it. Now we're just gonna use a quick planar tracker. Fusion has a planar tracker built into it. I have not had good luck with it though for this particular shot. So instead I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Mocha Pro, I have version five, and let's go ahead and uh, quickly track this thing. We're going to go ahead and choose the clip. Here it is, 60 frames, 24 frames, HD, that all looks good. Yes, I'll overwrite my existing one from when I was testing this out before. Jump to the end of the, the this shot, and let's go ahead and add a Bezier spline to this. Tracking kind of where all of our effects ended up. Uh, back inside of fusion. So let's kind of come down here a little bit of the corner of the mouth Over up 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 In a way like that that looks quite nice and let's just track it backwards not modifying anything else and see what we get Okay, so I think that'll work out pretty well. I want to come to the end of the shot and uh, let's view our surface and we'll scale that surface out all the way, just like so. Export the tracking data to Blackmagic Fusion Comp, copy that to the clipboard, jump back into Fusion, 
And uh, let's give ourselves again a little bit more room to work with here. Do, 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 do. In fact, I might even do this. And let's go ahead and paste this into the shot. Delete this first clip. And now we've got it. Let's go and bring it into here. See, actually, this is the foreground that's going to be tracked. The background will come from our original shot. And that gets all merged back in on top like this. Go into your tracker settings. And uh, let's make sure this is all looking good. Go to operation, set the operation to, let's try corner positioning. Does that get us what we're looking for here? And I wanna do the foreground only. There it is, okay. And now what we've got is we've got a foreground that pivots around quite nicely on top of the shot. Go back to our final merge, there it is. So let's go and take a look and see what we've got. All right, so this is not looking too bad at all. Um, there's a little bit of wonkiness at the beginning, but what we can do is we can actually make this effect kind of fade on and, and turn on as the head turns. It'll make it more dynamic and also helps hide that bad track we got at the beginning. Again, we're not doing any fancy 3D tracking or anything. We're just using a, a simple 2D planar tracker to make this work. But let's see what we can do. So I want it to, right about there, I think it starts behaving pretty well. So I want it to turn on or start turning on somewhere right around here. We'll say frame 27, we want to start turning on. So all I gotta do is come down to this merge. I'm gonna turn the blend all the way off. I'm gonna add a keyframe. Now I decide how long till I want it to turn on. Maybe I want it to come on over the course of, oh, 13 frames or so. We turn that blend back up, there it is. Okay, you could also turn it down a little bit more if you wanted, but we'll just go up all the way, full intensity. And now a new keyframe is already set. We can see these white lines here. Those represent our keyframes. Let's go and play it. That's looking really good. With that, one other thing we could do if we wanted to, to really uh, help play with this, is we can blur it on as well. It can start off blurry and then kind of fade into it. So I'm gonna take after my tracker here. In fact, let's clean this up again too. So I got that tracker. I'm gonna add a blur node after it and that blur node I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's go to the end here and kind of increase see what would, might look good for it something about like that I'm gonna go back to frame 27 set a keyframe I'm gonna go back up to frame 40 when it turns itself off and turn that back down and now I've got a faded blur keyframe effect going on for it. that's looking really really nice check that out All right, one other thing we could do if we want to add some more depth to what's going on to him here is we could uh, start adding some parallax and we can actually fake that really, really easy back here in the noise. So what I want to do is decide when I want the parallax to be starting, probably somewhere back here from 26 or so. And I'm going to just set a keyframe here to my center on the noise. So I've got the noise activated, the fast noise. Set a keyframe to the center. And then throughout the head turn and the camera move, maybe somewhere around to here. And then we can just start moving this around. So I'm gonna move it up a little bit like this. I think I moved it the right direction. I hope I did. We'll find out here real quick. Let's go and watch it. All right, that's not bad at all. A little bit of a sudden stop. And uh, on my other screen, you guys can't see it, but I have my, my dope sheet and my curves editor. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a, um, a spline or a fade to that particular animation here on the fast noise. So I'm gonna select my fast noise. I'm gonna go over to fast noise, find that center keyframe, and we're just going to go ahead and ease that. All right, and those points are smooth just by uh, right clicking on a point and literally setting smooth. It works as simple as that. Let's see how it looks now. Okay, not bad. Might be a bit too much of a movement. So let's go ahead and come into here. And uh, we'll just turn that down a little bit. We'll go and move it back a smidge. Make it very subtle. Let's try that. Okay. 
Hey, that's looking a lot better. Check that out. So we've got just a little bit of parallax going on. Okay, not too bad, not too shabby. And again, the really cool thing with all this is that it's all completely procedural. I can come back here to my very last frame, and at any point in time, I can change stuff. I can change how far up I want you know, this to be spreading. If I want the glow to be right there, a little bit more of the forehead action going on. And it's all super, super easy to do. And then everything else just kind of works on it. All right, and there you guys have it. That is my take of the Video Copilot uh, glowing man, radioactive man effect from 10 years ago, done here inside of the free Fusion tab of DaVinci Resolve. So let's just recap one more time what we've done. All right, so we've got our original footage. We also have tracked the footage over here inside of uh, Mocha and I brought that tracking data here inside of Fusion. I came in with a fast noise node, created the noise effect. We used a polygon in order to outline what we wanted that to be. And then we spent a little bit of time working on our vein placement, um, all set up over a white background. Okay, just like that, which we then used to create an alpha channel. That alpha channel was then used as the mask for our noise texture. So again, there it is without, and then there it is with. That was then color corrected into the right color space that we wanted. Again, that went through the tracker node. I came in and I used some keyframes of blurs and stuff like that. And ultimately this all gets merged over the shot here at the end of Sam Loya. Let's go and just watch this once more full screen before we uh, close out. And that is not half bad at all. That actually looks really cool and uh, hopefully inspires you guys to, you know, start playing with some more effects. I feel like now that everyone's been moving over to Resolve, we're not playing with the effects anymore because we're not we're afraid to touch After Effects or we've canceled our Adobe subscription and we don't have the After Effects. And so now, you know, you, you have no excuse. You've got Fusion here inside of Resolve. And as you've seen, I mean, it's not difficult to learn how to do this kind of stuff. It is pretty easy once you understand some basic principles of a uh, node-based compositing and you're able to make something that hopefully you guys can be proud of too. And I mean, this is not a super complex node graph by any means. I mean, this is very easy as far as node graphs go. So, with that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Please let me know if you've got any questions about this tutorial in the comments below. I'm L Director, this is L Director Vision, and you've been watching Indie Rebel Hollywood Effects without the Hollywood budget. We'll see you next time.